I'd like to talk to you now about the CEL2 compressor. Compression is an effect that's extremely useful when you're recording a live band or doing studio work or just trying to perform live and you have a lot of uh, dynamic changes in the music. Compression is an effect that a lot of times is more felt by the player than actually heard by the ear. It controls the dynamic range, meaning the soft notes to the loud notes. You can use compression and limiting to protect your system from, uh, say, somebody screaming in the microphone. I'm sure that never happens. You can also use it to boost levels of instruments that may be real delicate and subtle. The CEL2 gets its name from the fact that it's three devices in one. It's a stereo unit or a dual unit, that's where the two comes from. C for compressor, E for expander, and L for limiter. What do these three things do? An expander, if we start looking at uh, the unit from the, from the left to the right, what an expander does, it has two controls on it. The first control is a level control, and what that level does is it sets the point that the expander starts to work. Once the volume of the unit gets to the level you've set, the expander then changes how fast the decay or the, uh, the roll off of that sound goes. Let's say we have a, a guitar note. We can actually extend the guitar note by using the compressor a little bit. But what we can do is raise the uh, level, the noise floor, make it a little bit quieter by using the expander. The way this works we'll demonstrate in a minute, but we basically can set a level, let's say it's, uh, get a number off of here, say at minus 50 dB, we want the expander to start working. What that means is as our volume goes down and gets to minus 50 dB, we then can control how quickly it goes down by setting a ratio. Um, this particular unit, one to one, that's a one to one ratio, it's doing nothing, going all the way up to uh, a one to five ratio. And what that means is if that sound moves down one decibel, we'll actually hear five decibels of, of uh, decay. That's what the expander actually does. Downward, downward expanding, I think they call that. Um, the compressor is kind of the opposite of that. What the compressor allows us to do is set a level at which once the sound gets to a level, the compressor is going to kick in. And we have a few knobs on the compressor to talk about. Um, the first one is the, uh, the threshold, which I just mentioned. That sets the level at which this is going to start working. The second one is ratio, and much like the expander, that's setting the ratio. If, let's say we have it at four to one, that means it'll take four decibels of gain before we'll hear one decibel of gain. Of course, I think gain is actually logarithmic, so it's not quite that simple, but for, for layman's terms, to get, get the job done, that'll work. Um, then we also have an attack and a release button on the, on the compressor. And the attack button lets us, it tells us how much sound can actually sneak through before the compressor starts to work. The reason for this is most musicians know your attack is actually where a lot of your tonality comes from in the timbre of your instrument. We don't want to mess that up with the, with the compressor. The second, um, or the, the last knob on, on the compressor section is actually a release, and that's the same type of thing. It's letting us know how slowly does the compressor release its hold on that signal. So that's expansion and compression. The last um, device on there is a limiter, and the limiter is um, an infinite compressor, basically, meaning you can increase as many decibels as you want and you're not going to hear any more gain. And that's a real simple thing to use. It just has a dB setting. You find the maximum uh, volume you want your source to be and you set the limiter at that point. And at this point you've protected your system from somebody dropping a mic or screaming into a mic or anything like that. The really great thing about the CEL2 is that you get all three of those effects simultaneously and independently meaning you can have one signal source that is affected by that downward expander uh, so that the, the sustain rolls off at a rate that you control. The compression is set so that when you're in an operating dynamic range, the compressor is taking care of uh, peaks and, and, and valleys and smoothing things out. And also the whole time that limiter is there. Um, another sign of a really great compressor, which I found with this one, is it's really hard to tell it's on. Um, just, just the audio components that are in there are very, very good. So those are kind of some good things about the CEL2. Uh, a few more knobs that are on this, just to the far left and also in the center for the other channel, there's four buttons. Uh, the first one's a bypass button. The second one is a low cut filter. And what a low cut filter does is it takes all the frequencies from about 75 hertz and cuts those about 18 dB per octave, I believe, 18 or 15 dB per octave. And what that does for us uh, is, is if you're holding a vocal mic 
there's a lot of rumbling going on in your hand, or maybe it's in the stand and there's a lot of rumbling going on from the stage, the, the drummer, the bass player. You, you don't really need 80 hertz in your vocal mic. You don't need 80 hertz in acoustic guitar mic. You don't need 80 hertz in pretty much anything but uh, toms, kick drum, and bass guitar and keyboard, but the only things you'd leave it in. So that's a really handy feature to have on the compressor. Also, there's a de -esser. What the de does is it lets our compressor really listen for S's, S's in speaking, and it, it just kind of uh, smooths out that vocal sound if you have somebody speaking or singing that's pretty heavy on that. It can make it a very uh, a pleasurable experience to listen to instead of having that tss, tss, tss going on all the time. The last of those four knobs is an external source, or buttons rather, is an exter external source button. And that actually engages an input on the back of the unit. What we can do with the external source button is we can use a second audio signal to decide when the compressor starts to work. This can be really, really helpful. Let's say we have uh, a guitar player who's really loud and we want to limit that a little bit when the vocalist is actually singing. You can run the guitar player in, set the compression settings so that it's bringing his volume down a little bit, controlling that dynamic range, and then actually run an output from the singer's channel into that external source. And what that allows it to do is when the singer starts singing, the compressor will actually pull that guitar down just ever so slightly. And it can be very, very useful. By engaging the link button, we're actually able to control both left and right sides of our signal by just using the knobs on the left channel. This is very handy when you're dealing with a stereo signal. You can get a lot better control and accuracy. You're not trying to match two knobs on either side of the device. You just have uh, one threshold button, one ratio button, and they land right in the same place. It also, uh, the CL2 also sums those units, the, the left and right side, when it's looking at it electronically to make sure that that's working properly and very accurately. Now let's go ahead and set up our compressor so that we can demonstrate the de -esser. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do, we're gonna use a vocal mic, so we wanna make sure the low cut filter is in and that's just going to reduce all the frequencies below about 75 hertz. We don't need them in there anyhow. We better push the de button in if we want the de to work. Also, I didn't mention before that the bypass button is a two-color LED, which lets us know green, we're using the compressor, and red, we are not using the compressor. For this application, we can set our threshold if we want. Let's go ahead and just do that for fun. Um, it's going to be a little hard to do in the room with me talking, but typically what we want to do, let's just crank this up, is uh, go ahead and set the threshold level again so that the quietest point you want to hear, we're going to turn that down at a rate that we can set up here. But a good rule of thumb is to put this at about minus 9. There we go. Now again, that's probably not going to have too much of a bearing with me talking, but we'll go, oh, I have the mic muted. Isn't that smart? Um, then on our threshold level, this is the level that we want the compressor to start working. I've just used the settings in the manual, so we're going to go back here to uh, minus 15 dB. This is the level that we want the compressor to start doing something. What do we want it to do? Well, in this case, we're going to start with a compression ratio of about 3 to 1, meaning that for every 3 dB of gain that we get, we're only going to hear 1. On our attack, we want to move this to a level of about uh, 50 milliseconds. And again, these are just guidelines to get us started. This wide attack range is going to let the uh, vocalist timbre and tone come through before the compressor starts to work. So it's going to really save his characteristics, or his or her characteristics, um, so the listener can still hear that. On the release button, we're going to move this up to about four seconds. This should give us a nice, smooth compression sound. A lot of times if you get this too high, you kind of hear the compressor breathing. Um, if it's too low, it'll sound a little snappy. So that should be a good, again, a good rule of thumb, a good place to start. Also, if you wanted to, we could also use the, uh, the limiter here by determining what was the loudest point we want to get through our system, and that's we would just set that decibel level here. Uh, again, um, the gain control on the, on, the, on the unit, you want to set that so that you don't hear the compressor coming in and out level-wise. And we've also added here an input or output on our LEDs so you can visually see that that's going on also. Now we're going to demonstrate the de -esser. Uh, to do this, we're using the PVM2 recording mic with uh, lots of fancy switches on it and really cool looking thing. Um, we're also using an RQ series mixing console, which has a great mic preamp for the M2. Then we're inserting the uh, CEL compressor. We've got the knob set, 
as it told us to in the manual. And uh, right now the de-esser is engaged. Um, so we'll say some silly sentences. Let's take that out and we'll say some silly sentences. Uh, it's still out and hopefully if I talk about snakes and salamanders and all sorts of stuff like that. I really wanted to get Sylvester. I thought that would be good, a sample of Sylvester talking, but I don't have time to call Disney and get the rights to do that. So the de -esser is out. It's out. And we'll talk about uh, some salamanders and snakes and stuff again with it in. Hopefully uh, that's enough for you to say, yes, I hear the de -esser is now working. And now the de -esser is not working. And those S's and C sounds are a little bit sharper. Um, let's kick it in one more time. It's in and we'll say goodbye. Now let's set up our compressor to help us make a live recording. We are going to use a CD um, of recorded music that was recorded live just for a quick demonstration. Um, but what we want to do first is we need the low cut filter out because there's a bass player and maybe a keyboard player and a very sax player so we want to be able to hear them playing. We're not going to use a de-esser. Let's go ahead and uh, take the the uh, expander out so I'm gonna turn this level all the way down as you can see the light goes off too. the threshold again this is at what level does the compressor start working we're gonna move that up to about minus 15 because of course we want to get some volume going through there as far as the ratio goes we want to turn this up a little bit again if we get up to this point we want to be able to kind of step on that signal. It'll, you'll hear it really bringing some of the instruments out. So we're going to move this up to four point or four to one, which means for every four dB of gain, we're going to hear one. Our attack, we're going to bring that down a little bit from where we had it for the vocal. Bring that down to thirty-five milliseconds. Also on the release, we're going to drop this all the way down because we don't want to hear that compressor really doing anything that we can audibly hear. We don't need to smooth anything out. Again, same deal with the. Uh, limiter in a live situation. We're not going to have that here as we're using a programmed source, but this is an area where the limiter becomes very important so you don't distort your signal going into your recorder. Um, for our application here, we'll just leave it where we had it. It probably should work fine. Or we can actually just shut it off if we want it also. Um, again, gain, you want to balance that so your input source sounds about as loud as your output source. Now let's take a quick example of some live music just recorded, I believe, just in the room um, at a local nightclub. And what we're going to do is run it through the compressor. And normally in a live setting, which we're not right now, the limiter could be very helpful in keeping you from you know, smacking that input device on your recorder. But let's just run this with the compressor out for a minute, and then I'll switch it in and out. So with the compressor out, let's put it in. One more time, compress your game. It's really nice because you can actually hear the dynamic range of all the instruments. The bass, for instance, comes up a little bit more. The horns are a little bit softer. Uh, it can be a very useful tool when you don't have the time to run two separate sources, two separate mixing consoles, and four or five recording devices. It, it's a handy way to get a better live recording quickly. Now let's take a look at the back of the CEL2. We have channels A and B, which can also be left and right, depending on how you're running it. We have, for the input and output, we both we have XLRs or a TRS, input and output. So we have two ways to get in and out of this machine. It'll always also work as a true uh, impedance converter. So you can go high impedance in, basically like plugging a guitar in, and then go balanced out. Um, so it works as, a, as, a, as an impedance converter also. As far as the uh, in and out jack here and the side chains, both for left and right, that's where we get into using uh, cables that we call TRS cables. Let's quickly talk about what a TRS cable actually is. The TRS name comes from a cable that has a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. Tip, ring, and sleeve. Did I spell that all right? <laughs> um, these names come from, and you can see in the picture here, we've got the tip. You can see the second 
part of this cable there being the ring and the third part is the sleeve or ground. Now in a normal guitar cable you only have a tip and a sleeve. So this ends up being our positive and this is always our negative. You may not know this when you plug a lot of electronic devices together generally all the grounds are tied together by the back part of this cable. On a tip ring sleeve cable we can do a few things. We can have two ends that look like this that are wired the same way or in the case that we're going to use for an insert we're going to use a TRS cable on one end and the way we're going to wire this is this tip is going to be wired to the tip of one of these jacks. Let's call this positive. The ring or center position woo, is going to be wired to the tip of this jack. We'll call that negative tip. And again our grounds are all tied together so eh, I'd have to draw a pretty wild picture here but ground tied together and ground tied together. So what does this actually do? Well we have an input here. We can plug this to the um, input of our compressor and the signal comes in from the mixing board and then we can plug our output from the output of the compressor back to the mixing board. So with one cable with three ends we can make basically four connections. Um, what there are also on the back of the compressor we saw an in and out jack that's actually made for an insert jack on a mixing board but you can use a TRS cable to TRS so with one cable we can do our input and output connections because compression is such a complex tool to use I really recommend that you take a look at the CEL2 manual um, in conjunction with hooking it up and playing with it. As you can see, PVs went to great lengths to fill out a lot of information. There's specific examples for lead vocal, background vocal, keyboards. Compressors are great on keyboards, bass guitar, acoustic guitar. They've actually told you some great settings to start with and some really wonderful hints on what the knobs will do in those situations. So I really behoove you to take a peek at that when you, when you open yours up and start playing with it.